Thank you, Dr. Palmason, for taking the time to discuss your abstract entitled Transient and Proteins, Epidemiology, Causes, and the Impact of Mass Spectrometry, the ISTOP MM study, which has been selected for an oral presentation at the forthcoming ASH conference in New Orleans. Could you please provide a brief overview of your work presented in this abstract? Yes, of course, and thank you, Oscar. So this abstract is based on the ISTOP MM study, and ISTOP MM stands for Iceland Screen Treats or Prevents Multiple Myeloma. There is a large prospective screening study for MGUS in Iceland, and the trial has actually included over 50% of Icelanders that are over the age of 40. And the study participants were randomized to three different follow-up arms, and we have actually blood samples at baseline and follow-up in two-thirds of these individuals. And we diagnosed more than 3,000 individuals with an M-protein or MCUS. But when we looked at the follow-up samples, we saw that sometimes the M-protein disappeared. And why was that? There's actually not much written about this in the medical literature. But we want to characterize these individuals and try to find out the prevalence of these transient M-proteins and hopefully even evaluate the possible causes of this and compare it to individuals who have MCUS. And finally, we also want to perform mass spectrometry in these patients because we had biobanked samples both from the baseline and the follow-up testing. So we could go back and reanalyze the blood samples with mass spectrometry and correlate with the conventional methods, that is protein electrophoresis. Uh, thank you very much. Could you please tell me what are the main findings in the study? Well, we observed that in nearly 10% of cases, the M protein disappeared at a follow up testing when we are measuring with conventional methods. And that is what we mean when we're talking about the transient M protein cohort. And we, when we compare the transient cohort to the MCUS cohort, that is, patients who have regular MCUS, we saw there was an increased prevalence of infection, autoimmune disorders, asthma, and cancer. And we also observed an increase of usage of steroids, immunosuppressive medication, azithromycin, which is an antibiotic that has certain immunosuppressive potential. And when we analyzed these individuals with mass spectrometry, we found the same M protein in 92% of the samples at baseline, but actually we didn't find anything in 8% of these cases. There were very low M proteins and there were 15 individuals and they, 12 out of these 15 had various reasons for their M-protein, for example, infection, generalized cancer, autoimmune disorder, perhaps indicating a polyclonal immunoglobulin that were not an M-spike to begin with. And when we did the mass spectrometry at the follow-up test, we observed that most cases of these transient M-protein were not really transient at all. They were just probably below the limit of detection. So in 70% of, of these cases, the transient protein was still measurable with a mass spectrometry, but not with the conventional method. So we estimate the prevalence in this cohort of transient M protein is nearly four times lower than when we use conventional methods. We also observed often that the mass spectrometry found other M proteins compared to the conventional methods, that is multiple M spikes. Well, great research with uh, real potential clinical utilities in the near future, hopefully. Uh, thank you again, Dr. Palmason, for your insight into this work. Uh, this will be presented uh, on Monday, December the 12th at 4.30 p.m. during the ASH conference. Once again, thank you very much. Thank you, Oscar. Thank you.